Hi, I'm Aaron from Solace. One of the questions I get asked about a lot is what is the difference between a Solace topic and a Kafka topic? Well, the short answer is quite a lot. And if you give me 10 minutes, I'll explain why. So before we get into it, let's make sure we cover the basics first. What exactly is a topic? Well, it's a concept really of the publish subscribe or pub sub architectural pattern. Topics are used to route data or events in the form of messages to distributed applications, often using a message broker or an event broker. So typically, consuming applications will register a topic subscription of interest with the broker, and then whenever a publisher or producer sends a message on that topic, the broker will forward the message to any consumers that have a matching topic subscription. This promotes uh, a loosely coupled architecture and gives a scalable uh, one-to-many uh, style of communication. So since topics are just concepts, how the topics are actually implemented and how topic routing is actually achieved is left up to the specific broker. So from an API perspective, you know, as a developer, if I was gonna write some code, uh, at first glance, both these APIs look fairly similar. Both can subscribe to a topic, both can publish to a topic. One difference to note is that in Kafka, consumers actually have to pull the broker in a loop to get the next batch of messages out, similar to a database. Whereas with Solace, applications register a callback handler with the API, and the API uses that to dispatch messages up to the application asynchronously uh, as they arrive to be consumed, more of an event-driven style of programming. So while these APIs look like they provide uh, similar functionality, let's dig into the differences of the two brokers. So how are topics configured in Kafka? Well, Kafka was born at LinkedIn and it was built to ship log data from hundreds or thousands of web servers and stream it into their big data platform for doing analytics. And so because of this log shipping heritage, uh, Kafka topics are actually implemented as log files. You can literally think about them as log files on a server. And so when I publish to a Kafka topic, essentially I'm just appending a line or a message to the end of a log file. Similarly, when I read from a Kafka topic, I'm just asking for the next number of lines from a particular offset in a log file. And so because of this kind of file-based topic system, uh, you know, there, topics in Kafka are a very broker-centric concept. You know, they exist on a, on a server. Um, you write to them, you read from them like you would a file. And I'm simplifying things here a little bit because Kafka topics can actually be partitioned. You partition them for performance, for scalability, for load balancing, and each partition is actually a log file. So a single Kafka topic can contain multiple partitions, each being a log file. And because the partition is implemented, a log, as, implemented as a log file, there is a guarantee of order you know, uh, among messages. Messages are in a particular sequence. But across the topic as a whole, that uh, guarantee of order doesn't hold, which means that two consumers, both reading from the same Kafka topic, uh, might receive messages in different orders. The other uh, consequence of having a file-based topic system is that uh, each partition is actually, uh, you know, has an open file descriptor that the server needs to maintain. And so it puts a limit, a finite number, on the number of topics, unique topics, that you can maintain in a Kafka cluster. So how are things different in Solace? So topics in Solace are not configured on the broker, per se. Uh, topics are defined by the publishing application at publish time. Um, so think of it as a property of the message or metadata and not like you're writing to a file. So in my code, when I define a message, I'll have a payload, which can be JSON or XML or a binary blob or whatever you want. And when I send it, I, I send it with a, essentially a free text string that defines a topic that I create right there. So each and every message could be going to a unique topic if you wanted it to. Now you can use very simple topics if you want, but Solid supports a, a hierarchical data structure, a topic structure, uh, that allows you to be very descriptive with the, uh, the topic. So don't think of a topic as a, a destination or a label, such as transaction log or service request, but think of it more in the sense that uh, the router, the broker, is doing all of the filtering and routing uh, of these messages based on topics. So anything in your data or your payload of your, your message that you want to route or filter on belongs in your topic. So let's take a look at some real world use cases uh, as, as an example. So a foreign exchange uh, trading platform. Maybe I want to have the location that the data is being published from as part of the topic stream. I might even want to have the specific feed handler that's publishing that particular data. Uh, maybe what type of quote it is. Um, maybe what kind of quality of service. Is it a real-time feed? Is it a delayed feed? 
um, even the currency pairs that this code is related to. You know, these could all be part of your topic string description. A uh, next generation payments platform. I need to be able to do credits and debits, so that should be part of my topic string. Maybe the bank ID where this uh, transaction is destined for. I could even have the card number as part of the topic string. And maybe the store ID where the uh, point of sale terminal is located. These could all be part of the topic. And finally, how about an IoT application? Okay, so we have a connected buses uh, platform. So buses are driving around, sending out periodic updates via GPS every couple of seconds. So I might want to have the route number that the bus is on, the bus number specifically, um, even the latitude and longitude coordinates could be in the topic string. So these examples are just meant to give you uh, an idea of the variety and how dynamic topics are in Solace, that each and every message could be actually going to a different topic. So with all of those topics and all that uniqueness, how do we manage that on the consumer side? Well, so on the consumer side, when an application connects to Solace and specifies a topic subscription, Solace, the broker, maintains that in essentially a giant list of all subscriptions for all clients. Think of it as a subscription matching engine. And so when a message is going to be published onto Solace, what essentially ends up happening is the topic is extracted out of the message, it's compared against this matching engine, and it generates a list of clients that are eligible to receive the message, and then Solace will forward the message onto the clients. Now this is done in a very dynamic real-time way. It's done on a message-by-message -message basis as they arrive at the broker. And so because of this, there's a strong order guarantee on topics in Solace. If two clients, two consumers, are subscribed to the same topics, they will receive messages in the exact same order, always. Now, we just talked about how unique and dynamic and uh, you know, variable topics can be in Solace. So how do we manage that from a subscription perspective? Well, the answer is with wildcards. So with a single wildcard, I can match any number of published topics. Now, Solace supports two different wildcards. There's the multi-level wildcard, the greater than, uh, which can match one or more levels used at the end of a subscription or the star, the single level wildcard, which will match uh, anything up to the next level, to the next slash. And the star in Solus can actually be used as a prefix wildcard. So you can specify the first couple characters uh, on, the, uh, on that level. So going back to our use cases, let's take a look at some examples. So our FX trading platform, say all of the data is being published out of NY4 is tagged that way. With a multi-level wildcard, I could subscribe to all of the data coming out of that venue, regardless of feed handler, or you know, quote, or whatever type of data it is. Maybe I just need to funnel that into some kind of regulatory database. Or I want to do a very unique type of subscription where I'm listening to all spot quotes in my real-time feed for euros against any currency uh, across my whole global platform. So regardless of venue and regardless of feed handler. And I could do that with uh, the single level wildcard there. Our uh, payments platform. Well, say I need to set up a new B2B channel for a new bank that's joined my platform. So if he's assigned a, you know, ID number 18, it'd be very easy to subscribe a subscription for him and configure that as an async API connection so that all of the debit card transactions that are meant for him will get sent to him regardless of which store they're coming from. Or perhaps I've noticed some weird behavior coming out of a particular store, store 1049, and I want to listen to all credit card transactions for that particular store that start with the numbers 4817. Well, I could do that using the prefix wildcard as below. And finally, how about our IoT application, our buses that are driving around? Well, let's say I want to listen to all data uh, coming out of route number, number 95. So all the buses, regardless of whether they're positional updates or status messages or trouble messages, communications, I can do that with a combination of the single level and the uh, multi-level wildcard. Or a more advanced thing, how about I want to listen to all positional updates for all buses in a particular area? Because I have the latitude and longitude encoded, encoded in the topic string, I can actually use the prefix wildcard. When I subscribe to 45.3 star, it will match anything from 45.30 all the way up to 45.399999, which essentially gives me a range. Similarly for the longitude. And if I wanted to illustrate that graphically, it would look something like this. It's not square because we're not at the equator. But this would essentially be the visualization of the subscription. And so every time a bus publishes a message with the completed topic string, it would, and if it was in that range, it would match this particular subscription. So that essentially means as buses drive through this area, if they're publishing their location as part of the topic string, I can actually filter and route that information to me uh, like this. And as they move along and they tick, they send further updates every five seconds using MQTT, for example, uh, the, you know, this topic subscription would receive them until they ran out of the area.
Now, Kafka does support a form of wildcards, but because of the way topics are implemented as files, they don't work in the same way as Solus wildcard subscriptions do on a message by message basis. So in the Kafka consumer API, you can specify a regex when you subscribe. And what happens is the broker will periodically go out and look to see if any new topics or files have been created that match that particular regex. And if it finds them, it finds the consumer to those topics and it starts to receive messages. So essentially it's just automatically going and connecting you to more files. So because Kafka topics are typically fairly coarse grained, they don't support a hierarchical topic structure, it can only be keyed on one attribute across partitions, any additional filtering of metadata needs to happen at the consumer side after the data is already passed across the network. Whereas with Solace, because of the hierarchical topic structure and the wildcard ability, it allows you to do much more fine grained filtering at the broker before the data has gone across the network which saves network utilization, saves CPU at the client side from having to drop unnecessary data, and it's also a security thing. Uh, you don't have to trust that the consumer is gonna drop data that it shouldn't be seeing anyway. So I hope that was a good summary. I hope you got a good idea of what uh, the difference between Solace and Kafka topics are. Uh, if you like this video, give it a subscribe. If you have a comment, please leave it. Maybe check out our channel. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.